Hi, I'm Colin from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover of the VW camper which Southland's camper vans and Whitney Bay converted. So as we start the walk round on the driver's side of the vehicle first, if you open the driver's door, you put the tyre pressures on here depending on what tyre size are fitted to the vehicle and your bonnet release is in the corner here. So just in that corner there. So pull the lever and we'll go around the bonnet and we'll walk on the driver to the passenger side. Underneath the van just here, there's a little hose that comes out just there. And that is for your waste water. So you may want to put a container or a waste basket under there and that'll just pick up anything that you put down your little kitchen sink, which is a cold water fed tap only. And then coming to the back, you put your mains connection point. So if you are at home and you wanted to hook the vehicle up and charge the battery, or if you're on a site, you would hook the vehicle up. So you get your hookah bleed, lift the collar, slide it onto here first, then hook the site up and do it in reverse order when unhooking so that you're never walking around with a live lead. And then next to it, you do have your fresh water intake, so carry a hose pipe. You may want to carry a collapsible one, one of them 25 meters that go into a little bag on something compact as this, but you will need some hose pipe connections as it's mainly just a brass tap on site. But that's a lockable cap on the fresh water filler. And then empty, you just have to bleed it through the tap. So in the winter, don't leave it with a full tank of water in it. Just run it off via the waste. You've got your tow bar on the back here, which has seven pin electrics and is detachable. So you can put your key in and detach the tow bar there. Should you need to, but I will just leave it on. And in here you put your gas locker. So it's got a camping gas 907 gas bottle to connect. You just screw this on so you need to Pivot, turn the bottle as the regulator and pigtail is screwing into the bottle and you'll know once it becomes flush you can't turn it anymore the bottle it's connected but to turn the gas on and off it's this red toggle here and turn the gas off before you do go on the road it's far safer the freestanding table that goes onto the rail in the kitchen stands here with a foldable leg so you just put the leg up like so Collapse the leg like that, and you've got your blackout blinds on the. You've got your blackout blinds on the back, which are just on press studs. You can open them up and tie them back for when you're travelling, or if you want to keep them shut, that's entirely up to yourselves. And in the top, you've got two storage shelves. And of course, underneath, you've got storage which you can access both sides. So you've got your silver screens for the windscreen for blacking it out on an evening. Your Propex heater, so it does get warm underneath there. And as we walk around on the passenger side of the vehicle, there's nothing much on this side apart from your fuel filler, where your fuel and your AdBlue goes. So your fuel fills here, so it's a capless system. Well, it has got a cap on, so just see, but it's not a lockable cap. So you can undo that and fill with diesel. And then below, you've got add blue. So fill the add blue up when the light comes on, because failing not to fill the add blue up, it might seize the add blue pump, because I've seen a lot of that online. So do fill it up as soon as the light comes on. Make sure that you're pulling off wherever you're going and heading for add blue which you can buy on the pump or you can buy in the drums and carry one with you but it's far easier just to buy it on the pump turns the passenger airbag off here and one thing I didn't mention in the car which you'll see in the later clips is I did mention the heated seats you do have heated seats on here someone's retrofitted these when they've changed the seats to the leather upholstery 
So you've got one setting one at the bottom and the hotter setting at the top and that's on both passenger and driver single seats. And if we have a quick look underneath the bonnet, so there's a middle catch here. Don't put your hands over the camera. You've got your weight plate at the back, so it tells you your 2.8 ton gross vehicle weight. With that tow bar on, you can tow up to 4.9 ton. Air filter. Brake fluid. Power steering fluid, oil filler, and your oil dipstick. Screen wash, which is the main one you're going to need, and coolant. And then you've got your your battery here, your engine battery. So you've got your negative and positive terminal. Should you need to jump start the vehicle or give another vehicle a jump start off the van. So this is the 12 volt control panel. To operate, you turn on and off here. This is known as your master switch, which will either work 12 volt or 230 mains voltage if you are hooked up. You always want it to be run off the battery L, which is the leisure battery, which is designed to power the habitation area and not use the vehicle battery. So you can press this and view your leisure battery reading. You can press battery V, which is a van battery reading and view the battery level of the engine battery but you always want the little blue light to be on battery L because that's the designated battery to use for the habitation living side you do have your water pump here so if you've got enough water on board so if you've just filled up you can turn that on and then it will not burn the pump out and you can pull it through the taps like so and then you've got another switch for the lights on board inside the vehicle, which are all individually switched around the van. To work the Propex gas heater, so on the top dial is off at the minute. You've got the recirculation, which is just the fan. So if it's warm enough, you can put the fan on and it'll circulate heat back around the vehicle. Or you can change it to cooler air in the summer and cool the vehicle down. But to put the heating on, go down the gas flame, which is this one here. This is the temperature of the inside of the van. So the temperature, so you've got all the way from cold up to hot. The max being 30 degrees that we'll get to inside the vehicle. Next to it, you do have the lights for underneath the kitchen. Twin USB and two 230 volt sockets, so you've got to be hooked up for these to work. In the kitchen, you've got two gas burner hob for cooking. So you just turn them off here and use the ignition for those to light. And then a tap, which I've already shown you. Underneath, We've got a Breville microwave oven, which is 800 watts. So we've got to be hooked up for this to work because it is mains power microwave. Cutlery drawer, so you'll just need a cutlery insert, which you can pick up from any homeware shop to go in there. Twelve volt Dometic fridge. So it's a compressor fridge, it works off your leisure battery, so you turn it on and off here. And then you've got your temperature at this one here. So the bigger this the bigger it gets the light, the bigger snowflake is the cooler the fridge gets. So that is the coldest there that the fridge will get. You may need to turn it down slightly if you put your shop in and you're on site for a long period of time because it may freeze the fridge. And you do have a small freezer box there as well. When not using, turn it off, clean it out, take everything out, give it a wipe out with some antibacterial wipes or sprays, and then just leave the door open ajar so that air circulation is still allowed in and out the fridge and no funny smells form in your camper. In this cupboard here, 
you do have the location of your EC155 power supply unit. So this is what charges the leisure battery from the chargers on. So it powers all your living equipment. So underneath this one on the left hand side is all your 12 volt fuses. So they are just standard blade fuses. So do carry some spares and they're all listed underneath which fuse does which. And then this side, you have your main trip tester so you can trip it and see if you are actually receiving 230 volts if you think you're not by tripping the camper. If the camper van doesn't trip, then it's not your end, it's the site. And then you do have your MCBs there, so if you trip the vehicle out, you can untrip it there. And underneath here, lifting this panel out, you have your fresh water tank, so you can open the tank to see how much water's in at any one time, because there isn't any gauge on here. But if you have filled it from outside, you should know how much you've got. And this is about a 15 litre tank. So to operate your rock and roll bed, so you've got a lever in the middle, which you pull up. So once you've lifted the lever up, you can then adjust the seat. And there is numerous settings you can have it on so that the seat's not so far up. So you're a little bit reclined when you're sitting in the back, which is just where the notch is here. If not, you can lift it all the way up and slide it all the way out. So you need to slide it down and then just be careful with the belts. Put your weight in the middle of the seat. And click down like so. And there you have your double bed. And you'll just lift it in the centre section, same handle, push it down, and lock it into place. And then that's ready for travelling two passengers in the rear. So in the pop top, you've got your mattress on here on the and then you can push this up to give you more headroom when you sitting and cooking and then to shut the roof pull this down if you open the door you make it slightly easier for yourself because it's not as hard to pull the roof down because there's no resistance and then what you need to do is handles on both pull it down pull it down so far and you want to pull the canvas in on the sides of the vehicle just so that it doesn't get trapped and then you want to pull it in at the front. Roll it on itself at the front. So it tucks away. Pop the strap through here and through the top when you get the opportunity to. Make sure it's all tight and then you can pull it down all the way. Then you want to press the clasp, pull that down, do it on both sides. And then you can use the excess strap to just wrap around the main strap handle, put a little knot in it there slip knot and that is a roof down and safe to then drive on so now in the cab on the driver's door you do have driver and passenger electric windows followed by the adjustment of the mirrors which is electronically so we can adjust the mirrors there we can push them up to the top left and they'll fold so if you need to get through a tight gate post, you can, the mirrors will fold up. You've got heated mirrors this side. So if they are wet or if it's icy, you can 
heat the mirror so that you can get clear visibility. Lock and unlock on an evening. Do take into consideration when you unlock the van, you need to open the cab door. Otherwise, you'll hear the lock try to lock itself and that's just a standard thing on all VW vans. Um, so you just need to open one of these doors because if these don't open, it'll lock itself again. Um, so just open the passenger door and then open, have it, open the sliding door and jump in. Lights off, side lights, headlights, pull out for rear fog lights, remembering to turn them off. And then you do have headlight adjustment here to dip the beam of the headlight. Pressing the clutch and hovering the brake and, the, and turn the key and the vehicle will start. So you've got wiper stalk this side, but you've also got the trip computer. So if you press the trip computer, which is this here, it'll go through the screen. So at the moment it's telling you add blue range. So you've got 3000 mile to empty. Your range of, in your fuel tank, so you've got 195 mile until empty. Your consumption, you're not moving, so it's not going to tell you your consumption. Speed warning, it's not set, so just forget about that. Oil temperature, obviously the engine's just started, so the temperature's should read in zero, because obviously you can see the oil gauge there, temperature gauge, it's, the vehicle's not a temperature and then your distance that you've covered. So once you start moving, that'll start clocking the miles up and you can see how many miles it's taking you to get there. Indicators this side, and obviously flash your lights and your high beams this side as well by pushing it away from you. Five speed manual gearbox, we lift the collar into reverse. You've got your temperature, your fan speed and your distribution for your air conditioning. I should see your heating because there isn't any air conditioning on this model, but you do have recirculation. 12 volt cigarette point USB for the head units. Turns your start stop off, but your start stop will only work if there's enough charge in the battery. So if it hasn't been sitting and the battery's got enough charge in it, the start stop will work. Hazards. Lockable glove box with the main ignition key a VW key and then you do have your radio so you've got radio FM AM DAB press 1 to 4 to save your favourite channels you can go to this one here and view all your stations scroll through them there and update the list here medias obviously bluetooth or USB and they connect your phone, you go phone. Select the phone, find the phone, and you want to find VW on your phone. It'll ask if you want to pair, press pair. It'll ask if you want to allow your contacts to be saved, press allow. It'll download your contacts and your phone book into the head unit. And then if you want to use Apple Music, Spotify, um, stream music from your phone, you can. by pressing media once the phone's connected you've got a jack for your CD because it does take a CD so you can eject the CD you've got setup and sound but that will all go through that in your VW handbooks <laughs>